the river it has a tremendous force. It has an appeal about it that uh, I can't describe. But when you have people in a boat, to sense a kind of uh, the life that the river has, it's mind expanding for sure. How's the boat look? Yeah. It looks like a piece of artwork. <laughs> we built this boat in memory of Martin Litton because he deserved it. I couldn't be happier, I tell you. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to get this thing done. To the last minute, <laughs> got her finished. <laughs> The Grand Canyon is America's open-air cathedral that holds beauty in the palm of, of its hand. No other landscape opens up deep time like the pages of a book and invites you to contemplate the implications of all of that time. Here you have this giant hole in the ground. And when you enter into it, and when you float through it, on the back of this legendary river that flows through its heart and that is responsible for having carved and created the thing in the first place. You are entering a hidden and secret world whose walls are framed by rock that is so unimaginably ancient that it's almost impossible for the human mind to grasp. And this happens if you spend enough time in the canyon, particularly if you're a boatman. I first saw the Grand Canyon in 1939. It never occurred to me when I first looked over the edge that I'd ever go on the river. Now, there had been trips, but they were considered very special expeditions, you know. You might as well go to the North Pole or something. The first time I ever rode a boat through the Grand Canyon was 1956. Commercial trips then were so uncommercial, they were like the small private trips you might see today. We were all sleeping on the damp sand right next to the river. Beaches went way out. I couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> 